Welcome back, Real Chip TV, the weekly chirp. We're going to be breaking down the second day of training camp. And as you can see, we are in my room right now due to inclement weather. But like the birds, we don't stop. Rain, rain or shine, we're still going to be coming at you guys. So thank you for tuning in. And Tom has a big announcement, something you really want to talk about. Um, Got to introduce the uh, Chip God Fantasy League. Um, first, yep, first year. Uh, we're going to be doing this. Um, we're going to try to keep it an annual tradition. But uh, thank you for everyone who got in the league. It's a 12-man league. It's a lot of people yep. going to get in on this. Yeah, and me, me and him have a team, and uh, we're the Real Chip Squad. So I like, it. I like the name. That was, that was his idea. That's a good one. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and there's you know 11 other lucky contestants that are going to have a chance to win uh, a bunch of prizes. Uh, um, Stitch jersey is the, the big prize. Uh, we have T-shirts for uh, you know the custom. We have... Uh, T-shirts printing for uh, our blog, the blog, and um, you know we have things coming along. Some so chip I mean, TV swag, some chip God swag. It's, yep. it's a good looking stuff. Yeah, we got, we got some things. You know, working some things in Photoshop, graphic design. They're looking good so far. Yep, and uh, and you know, obviously, chance to win a free jersey. So uh, if we win, we're gonna send the, the the main prize to the second place winner. Um, you know, I don't necessarily think um we're you know we're better than anyone else. So I mean, I I, I love a challenge. I want to win. So. Um, you know, we're not holding back. We're not holding back. Just because we made the league and we feel that someone else should, we're not holding back. Yeah, we're not holding back. But you know, I think everyone's going to be competitive, and I want to give a special shout out to everyone who did get in the league. Um, it's going to be a fun year with you guys interacting, and uh, and and the draft's always thirtieth, and, and we're looking forward to it. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm really looking forward to it because. I haven't had some luck in fantasy football, but this guy is a guru, <laughs> so I'm feeling good. And we're not drafting Ka Kaepernick. No. He lets me down every year. Every year I'm like, ah, oh, man, I get those all those rushing yards. Doesn't work. <laughs> Don't work. Don't work. Uh, so, but let's dive into really what we want to talk about, and that is the uh, the open, the second open training camp practice. The link, pretty much packed out. Forty three thousand people. That's crazy for a practice. I know. That's insane. Talking about practice, yeah. man. Talking about practice, man. The yep. fans showed up, came out in droves, and. You know, the biggest story from that really was the, the Cowboys banner. You were there. I mean, the We Them Boys banner. What did you think about that? During the National Anthem. Yeah, on Military Appreciation Day. Um, I, I just think that exactly what the player said. D'Amico Ryan said it perfectly. Just, you know, it seems like they're more concerned about, uh, you know, us than we're concerned about. We're focused on playing football. I'm saying it's like I'm on the team, but, you know gotta say it like I'm on the team because you know we really are here in Philadelphia it's a football town we're focused on football we're yeah. not focused on the rah-rah all the crap talk I mean it's fun you know the rivalry leave it to the fans it's, the banner was funded by Greg Hardy I mean come on man you just got to Dallas yeah he knows it's, nothing about the rivalry yeah, what does he have to say yeah, he is yeah he shouldn't have anything to say so you know it's kind of like that that guy on the playground that he never scores a point or never wins a game, and then the, the only game he wins that he has to puff his chest out and talk a bunch. You know, Beth Correa versus Ronda Rousey. One was doing a lot of talking, and then that quick knockout. So watch out for week two, man. These players really, you could you could tell there was some fire uh, burning in their eyes when they saw that. Oh, yeah, no, it just that's definitely going to light a fire. It's going to be a slugfest. A little Rocky, little Rocky <laughs> battle. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for that Rocky. music to start playing. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Unfortunately, though, we did have a big injury. Uh, Ja'Cory Shepard getting uh, injured, tearing his right ACL. You know, a lot of fans were, uh, you know, now are really regretting that Brandon Boykin trade, but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I mean, he wanted, you know, he's going to tear his ACL either way, you know, as God would intend. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, it's very unfortunate, but, you know, Chip's definitely going to have something to do with this. I mean, what, what do you think about this injury? Who's going to step up and fill this void? I think there's a lot of guys. I think even with you know the loss of Boykin and Ja'Cory Shepard, both of them, I mean, it's unfortunate that we lose such a promising young talent, but he did not have this job locked up by any means. You have Jalen Watkins, who's a second-year man out of Florida. We picked him first overall in the fourth round last last year in the draft, so that's a pretty high pick. You know, That's a pretty valuable guy. Um, got to give him a shot. He's, he's got a, a shot to take that job. We have uh, EJ Biggers, who we, pick, who we picked up from uh, the Redskins, um, he's a solid veteran corner. He could he could do uh, do some you know make some impact in that spot. And mm -hmm. uh, and you know uh, Walter Thurman and Malcolm Jenkins they can drop down into that box and cover that slot. Uh, that slot guy you know two safeties that are very versatile. They can cover man. And then you got um, Eric Rowe and Nolan Carroll will be rotating on the outside. But I think Nolan Carroll could play a little inside and he stood out. 
even Maxwell, if a guy you know lines up in the slot that's you know superior talent, you know a yeah. lot of teams like to try that out, and you send Maxwell to cover him. So there's there's a lot of options there, and I think I think they're going to be just fine. It's unfortunate for Jacory Shepard, but I think it's more unfortunate for him than the success of the team. Yeah, I agree, and I don't think we'd really be you know reading so much into this if he wasn't having such a great camp because he yeah. is a sixth round pick, and you know. I'll, you know, he's looking like he was looking like a steal in camp. Yeah. So, you know, Chip wasn't putting all his chips in on Jacory on Jacory Shepard to be, yeah. you know, their their big uh, you know, nickel cornerback exactly. or whatever. Exactly. So, um and then you also said in your blog post, you know, the rest of the defense, so besides that injury, everything else looked great. And in particular you said Benny Logan and the defensive line were just monsters. Mm-hmm. What 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 impressed you about them? Uh, just mostly, mostly their size, their athletic ability, um, the way they fly to the ball, the way they, you know, the, their cohesiveness has been improving every year. They've been this is their third year, their third training camp together. And Benny Logan was, you know, a rookie in 2013, a third round pick who, in training camp, wasn't expected to start. We had Isaac Sopawaga in town, um, a veteran nose tackle, trying to rebuild this three four. And I think in the third season now, it's, it's really coming along. And the size of these guys and the way they move. Um, is is a huge factor as, as to why they are, you know, a big piece to this team and a big, you know, one of the top units in the league. Um, they're they're just worlds worlds more athletic than a lot of the defensive linemen in the NFL. And it's cool the fans nickname them the Nobodies because no one talks about these guys. They're all mm-hmm. young. They're not household names. Thornton, Logan, even Vinny Curry, um, a rotational guy, and Fletcher Cox, obviously. Um, and they really are the nobodies. I mean, no one talks about them. Everyone wants to point fingers in the secondary and this and that. But it, these guys have quietly been making you know people realize that this is a unit that's gonna gonna do some damage. No, that's all. I mean, I, Benny Logan was a beast last year. And I when I think of nose tackles, I usually just think of you know big Samoan guys, <laughs> <Not> <laughs> just, you know, with that with the hair and yeah. stuff like that. So for him to just get in there and just you know tear up and do what he did last year, I, I can't wait to see how he's gonna do. But, you know, you also love the offense, too, though. Um, Absolutely. Josh Huff, in particular, what did you like about him? Um, one of the main things that stands out about Josh Huff is, uh, aside from his body style, he's, he's 5'11", 206. So that's, that's a big kid. I mean, he's only 23 years old, and he's already looking like a man. His arms are, are really, you know, just defined. And you just see him. He's built like a running back, and mm-hmm. he's a receiver. So... That's gonna he's gonna do some damage with the ball in his hands, um, breaking tackles. He's one of those smaller, tough receivers, like a Golden Tate, um, Heinz Ward type player. He blocks, mm-hmm. does all the dirty work. He loves the game. He has the passion for the game to be the, to be a great. And you can just see it how he plays. Um, and, and another thing that really impressed me about him is that he's lining up as the number one receiver going against Byron Maxwell in 11 on 11s. That's that's huge. And Byron's really, you know what, Byron Maxwell, I'll say he has gotten his way with him a couple. I mean, he's just locking him down. He's not giving him anything easy, but Huff's relentlessness and this, his ability to keep persevering through, you know, having to go against, he's not complaining, he's not hanging his head, you know, he's not going to the quarterback, you know, throwing his arms up like Des Bryant. He's just working quietly to get better, and that's really what I think, you know, is a big staple of this team is just continuing to get better and continuing to have that growth mindset. Yeah. That's, that's huge for him. No, that's awesome. I mean, to have, to go up against, be able to go against Byron Maxwell every day is just, is got to be just such a good cha- a good challenge for him. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, no pressure because you're in camp, but, man, that's got to feel. Going to get him a lot better. Oh, yeah, that's going to get, that. those are some quality reps, those are quality reps, and, I have to ask, how, how did Bradford look? Bradford, uh, you know, he's coming along. Um, he looked, in the two days leading up to this camp on Sunday, the reports were he was just shredding it up, mm-hmm. hitting everyone. And he started really hot in this camp. And I was like, oh, gosh, here we go, man. Mm-hmm. He's, he's coming along. He's, he's going he's gonna to shred it up. And he had his ups and downs. But for the most part, you just see the arm strength. You see the, mm-hmm. you know, the health coming back, the comfortableness with this line, um, the the, the him being comfortable with you know everything, he he's just he's getting the game back, and he yeah. loves football, and he's played it his whole life. So t- having that taken away is is gonna even make him want it more, and you can just see that. I mean, he makes a couple of throws that just wow you. So I'm really yeah. excited about him. He's a veteran, but it's a, you know it's a new scheme for him too. So you know he's got a there's gonna be a learn, learning curve with him as well. Even though you know you think veteran, oh, they're just gonna come in here and just yeah. you know know how to, how to do everything. It's definitely a you know unique style of offense that oh, we're yeah. running here. Oh, yeah. 
So uh, now we're going to turn to Chip Chatter, uh, questions submitted by you, the fans. First one, we're going to go to Instagram, fill this Twitter account, I guess a big Philadelphia Eagles fan, Philadelphia underscore Eagles 2015 asks, who do you think, who do you think will fill in for Ja'Cory Shepard? Can Jalen Watkins, can he step up and get the job done? Um, I think that he's right on the money with Jalen Watkins. I think Jalen Watkins can step in there and get some quality reps. Um, they, they've been rotating them. Even though Ja'Cory Shepard, you know, to, to the fans' perspective and what the reports were saying, that he was playing the best and he was getting all the first-team reps with um, the, in the nickel, um, they, they planned on rotating and seeing really who's the best. So without Ja'Cory now, you have to just sift through the other guys. And I mean, it's been an open competition since day one. So I think Jalen Watkins, you know, when Ja'Cory went down, he stepped in there and he did an all right job. So I'm, I'm excuse me, I'm excited to, um, I'm excited to see how he plays. He's, he's a big, physical, uh, long, athletic player, and that's what we like in this defense. Yeah, no, that's definitely what we're going for. Um, Another question from Instagram, Eagles underscore UK. This guy from UK, and he does He just bought his first ticket to an NFL game, yeah. the game in London, and uh, he's gonna, gonna get to see his boy Lashawn McCoy. Shady's yeah. gonna play. So, Buffalo, Jack Jack Jacksonville. Jacksonville. so Eagles underscore UK, you enjoy that game because it is. At, football games are just ama amazing. Yeah, like really. it's just. You know, I'm sure, you, you know, you guys have the soccer games over there. I'm a huge soccer player. I would love to go over and see a game. But, yeah. you know, our football, it's like your football. And it's just, it's yeah. just, it's just awesome. Yeah. You're going to have an awesome time at this. Yeah. He asks, how worried about Kiko's concussion are you? I really like that question. It's a great question. That's a hot topic. Um, you know, I'm a big Kiko Alonso fan. I love what he's been able to bring, the intensity to practice. But I am concerned. I mean, there's a level of concern there. Obviously, everyone's concerned, but, you know, reports out of camp is everyone's saying he's going to be fine. He, he's got experience playing this position. He, it's not like he desperately needs the reps. You know, mm -hmm. he's pretty comfortable. He looked great. Mm -hmm. um, just re It's going to rest the rest. It's <laughs> That's weird how way of saying it. It's going to rest the rest of his body, mm -hmm. you know, so he'll get a little extra rest there, and he'll, he'll get healthy, and hopefully he's back, and hopefully he can get right back to where he was, and uh, that's playing good football. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not too concerned. But there's definitely concussions suck, but there's definitely worse worse yeah, things than a concussion. Yeah, um, Justin, uh, now we're going to go to YouTube, and uh, our boy Justin Bradley, he asked, do you think Cody Parkey is the best kicker in the NFL? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why can't he? He's good. Uh, he's good. I love Cody Parkey. I love him, too. He's a heck of a kicker. Uh, he's a young kid, and um, I think that, you know, with a couple more years getting stronger, getting, you know, just improving mm -hmm. his, his accuracy and things like that. He's great last year, so he's got to keep consistency, and that's really the biggest thing with kickers is keep your consistency. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, no, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a cool guy. He was at training camp, you know, uh, doing autographs in the middle of camp because obviously kickers and punters. You should see Donnie Jones. He runs around the punter. He runs <laughs> around with the receivers and catches passes when the quarterback's warming up, throwing deep. He, yeah. <laughs> He's a funny guy, but Co Cody's fitting right in with uh, with those guys. He's he's smiling and he's in inter interacts with the fans, and he's just the type of guy. I mean, he could be like another eight David Akers. Oh, absolutely! No, it, that that's awesome. He was actually at a Citizens Bank. He was uh he was socking some dingers out there in BP not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, I saw an article. I saw an article. There was him in the him in the cage, and from behind, the way he was saying he was batting left, it I thought it was like Chase Utley. So I thought <laughs> I just saw the thumbnail. And I thought that it was oh like oh like Chase Utley you know he just came back I thought it was like him and then I was like I read the article it was Cody Park I'm like what so, yeah I read about it but it's like it's pretty cool to see you know him going into uh, stepping in the cage too um, and if you guys want to get your questions on the show just you know send all your content to uh, realchiptv at gmail .com or you know get hit us up on the social media accounts you know and in the bar below just check them out if you guys have any questions we'll make sure to get you on the show. Um, now we're going to go to the game one, preseason game one. This oh, is the gosh. first game. Games don't matter, but this is <sighs> this is exciting. What we've been waiting for. This it. is. I, oh, it's game one. It's, it's really. It's, uh, I'm so excited. So, you know, the score of the game, not really a big a big deal, but what are three things you're looking for out of the Eagles? I'm definitely number one is obviously on every Eagles fan's mind is um, Sam Bradford. How much is he going to play? How can he react to pressure, real live pressure coming at his, at his legs, at him from every angle? Um, you know, it would be really dirty if uh, the Colts threw some crazy disguised blitzes at us in a preseason game. Yeah. <laughs> that would be messed up. <laughs> a little revenge from last year's Monday night. Yeah. Um, that would be, that'd be bad. But 
I think we'll block for him fine if he gets in there. I mean, I think he will get in there. So, mm -hmm. um, number two will be uh, the defense. I want to see Byron Maxwell, the new faces on defense, like Byron Maxwell, Walter Thurmond, who has been standing out in camp as well. He had two interceptions yesterday. Uh, that Thurmond, that is, he just seems like he's a guy that he hawks around the ball and he knows where the ball is at. So, I'm going to see him and his adjustment to moving to safety for the first year in his career because mm -hmm. um, he's a you know, converted corner. Uh, so, so some of the new faces in the secondary for sure. And uh, number three is special teams. Um, I want to see you know, if they can improve. Cody Parkey, I want to see a couple of nice kicks made. Um, I want to see you know, how Donnie Jones is pinning, pinning them back in t inside the 10, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, just, I mean, it's, you got to have questions about special teams because they were so good last year. Can they repeat that success? So yeah, it's, we'll, we'll see. It's hard to, hard to maintain number one when everyone's, come, exactly. everyone's coming for you. And you know that all eyes are going to be on Bradford. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to be watching what does what Bradford got? What does he look like? You know, all the teams are going to be essentially scouting them out, probably mm -hmm. more so than your average preseason game. Especially those division rivals oh. they are really going to be, you know, what does this guy got? Yeah. That's going to be who they have to face for the next 10 years if, uh, if, he's, if he's healthy for, mm -hmm. you know, for the, the you know, immediate future and the long term. He's going to be our quarterback for a while. So. Yeah. Well, hopefully he makes them all scared and just plays lights yeah. out. Yep, yeah. I'm hoping. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Uh, join us next time.